before we go into uh, uh, well, the last album and blood blood ceremony, uh, just one question: um, What was the first album that you bought yourself? I can't remember the first album I bought, but the first CD I bought was probably ACDC Live when I was 11. 11. Yeah. And why did you buy this album? Uh, we have we had a great uh, music station in Canada. We're from Toronto, and uh, we had much music. Metallica and stuff like that. ACDC Live. ACDC Live. Yeah. And uh, maybe Nirvana at that time as well. Because what what year are we talking about? Now? This would have been 91, 1991. Just a kid. Okay. Um, But if you listen to that album now, that uh, the HDC live, do you still like it? I still love it, yeah. And I still haven't seen them live, so I may have missed my chance. But uh, yeah, that's uh, a lot of my a lot of the stuff I was into as a teenager. I still really like. I just like more music now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, were you already making music yourself? Um, I just had some bands with friends when I was a, a teenager, but nothing serious. Blood ceremonies. Probably my first real band and to play live. What did you learn from those previous bands? Um, I learned, uh, I guess, uh, <laughs> how to organize a show. Um, you know, how to just the stuff like that. Because I guess with Blood Ceremony, we were always organizing our first shows. So from yeah, I guess we had uh, some songs ready to go to play live. I guess. Uh, we were able to just kind of get our own kind of thing together. And wh when did you start writing your own songs? Uh, that was with Blood Ceremony. The first, uh, all the songs that were on the first record um, were songs that I had written up to that point. There was no like design in mind for that record. It was really just a collection of what we had up to that point. And in hindsight, when, when, did, when did you start writing your own songs? <clears throat> Would have been 2005. And uh, we started in Toronto. Um, Ali had moved to vocals uh, early 2006 and was playing flute and then we started to uh, write songs with flute melodies in mind and that was I guess when we began to develop our sound which was the, the mix of the kind of heavy Sabbath style riffs and, and the flute melodies. Yeah. So um, it was just around that time and then we just one after the next just uh, kept coming up with different ideas. And when you first had that flute, flute sound incorporated. Um, was it something that you thought, well, hey, this is this is the way to go? Yeah, I think I, I remember having a moment where um, we were jamming, and Alia just busted out this flute solo, and it just, I think it was. Uh, I mean, I was really digging it, so I, and I thought, you know, it was a good sound, and but really, we were just at that time trying to get a gig. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, in hindsight, I think it was a bit of a unique s style, for sure. Because were you into bands like Yes for Tool and then other flute style bands, or was it? Yeah, I, w I worked in a lot of well, one or two record stores in my 20s, and uh, I'd come across a, quite a lot of stuff that uh, from the 70s that had flute. So it didn't seem like a really far out idea, you know. It, uh, but I think nowadays it's a lot less common. But uh, yeah, um, bands like Black Widow, uh, Jethro Tull were a big inspiration. Uh, when we got the band together, but also a lot of Italian prog, uh, Osana, Didi Lean, bands like that. I'd already had those records and uh, was uh, really kind of moved by that. I've always loved the sound of flute and rock. And did you play the flute yourself? Uh, no, I have a flute, but I'm useless at <laughs> it. I'll leave that to to uh, the experts. But uh, yeah, Alia, Alia got me into Jethro Tull. She kind of, uh, she I think I had the DVD of Jethro Tull live at the Isle of Wight, and that yeah. was when I realized what a heavy band they were. So it was uh, meeting and being friends with Alia, just exchanging music ideas. She got me into a lot of really cool stuff, and uh, and that was really the be beginning of the band. Is it something for you? Because well, I think in many interviews, uh, people ask you about the flute. Is it something that 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 limits you? Does it bother you? Do you think it's well? This is the way. This is how we are, and this is the way the sound that we're going to have. Or No, I don't think it, it will ever limit us. It's it's one instrument, and uh, I, I, you know, for a lot of the songs, it's the lead instrument, and, and yeah. that uh, I think is is kind of cool. But 
we've uh, we made an effort with the second record we did, Living with the Ancients, to mm -hmm. not make it such a primary focus. We have a lot of like uh, heavy kind of tracks with organ, like deep purple style organ, and and uh, so we we made an effort to kind of move away from it. But uh, I mean, I, I'd never get sick of hearing the flute, um, you know, alongside you know an old school riff. So it's kind yeah. of our main sound for sure. We, we experimented with, you know, different instrumentation on the last record, The Elder Stark. So we have um, electric fiddle and some Moog and uh, different synthesizers and stuff. So we try to keep things interesting. What do you look for in, 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 in writing a song? Because you said, well, we, we experiment <coughs> now with many different, different instruments. What do you look for in music? What I look for in music I, I'm now, listening to? What, what do you look for in, in the music that you create in yourself? Uh, well, the, well, the songwriting process for us, I mean, we're all kind of um, uh, tossing ideas now, but uh, if I'm writing a song, usually I have the title first, yeah. kind of like an exploitation movie, I guess. We'll have the title and then uh, usually like a melody or, or chorus kind of comes together and I just start to cobble bits together and uh, I usually write a flute melody on the guitar and, and Ali will take it and, and, and uh, she'll change it up a bit. and. And that's generally how we do it. I'll, I'll bring the main ideas to practice, yeah. and then we'll all kind of arrange it. So, the instrumentation and, and the different kind of like timbres and, and, and tones, that's all stuff that we do after kind of the song has been built. We start to work on the arrangements of it more and more. Yeah. Yeah. It's for you, the, the, um, if you compare, well, your, your, your three albums have been, uh, since 2008, you have released three albums. Um, what do you. What is your personal opinion about the way that you have developed? Um, well, our, our last record, The Elder Stark, is my favorite, so I suppose that's that's a good thing. And I, I feel that we haven't moved away from the core ideas of, of what that we had when we started. I feel like we still have, you know, we're developing the aesthetic as, I guess, moving away a bit from pulpy horror, more into um, kind of like more subtle, supernatural songs, you know. Inspired by a lot of writers like Algernon Al Blackwood and Arthur Mackin, and we like the stuff that's very kind of suggestive of um, you know uh, different forces at work. So when yeah. we call it the record, The Eldritch Dark. It was uh, kind of suggestive of uh, you know like a twilight realm, I suppose. That's like a liminal space where these things can kind of uh, encroach on everyday life. So it was uh, we were kind of moving away lyrically from like kind of pulpy stuff and a more subtle themes I, I hope and how do you do you do you do you write all, all the lyrics I write the majority of them yeah and what 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 do you start off with normally I don't know it takes me a while <laughs> just uh, usually a core idea for a song something in the song might be about very generally and then try to sketch it out I guess the only time I actually had um, a real plan was uh, we have a song in the last record called uh, Ballad of the Weird Sisters and we wanted to take an old um, English ballad and kind of rework it like our favorite 70s English folk bands did like Steel Life Span uh, Fairport Convention would take an old song and, and kind of uh, rearrange it but in the end we ended up just kind of writing our own and I wanted to write a, a sort of episodic thing so um, that was the only time I ever tried to attempt something that was you know and, and, and if you now look back at well at the lyrics at your first album do you still like them? Uh, enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to look back at that stuff too much. I mean, it's just right now we're concentrating on the fourth record and, and just tossing around ideas now. So 